have to wait and see. Well, with me is Andre Kravitz. He's with the BBC's Russia service and Fidelis Mba from the BBC Africa service. Uh, Andre Fidelis, good to have you on the program. I'll start with you, Andre. How do you think Russian fans would react to a manager who says, uh, uh, I'm a fascist, but not a racist? Uh, well, I... Um Historically, the word fascist is, has very strong negative connotation in Russia because of World War II. And uh, I think it's, uh, you know, I don't even see Di Canio, for instance, uh, coaching a club in Russia because uh, it's, it's very, very strong. And uh, um, he actually said that he expressed some interest in coaching in Russia. But uh, honestly, I don't think it's happening. So I think a lot of people would be um, really, really angry if uh, he was uh, the coach of uh, a team in, in Russia as, um, you know, the 9th of May when it's the national holiday in Russia uh, at the, the end of World War II is a big celebration and that's why... And it's of because of that historical, historical connection of course, that of there course. would be quite Fascist a... Fascist is a very strong word. But so. he could get away with saying, I'm a racist. Uh, it will be very strong as well, but uh, to some to some extent, uh, to say fascist is even stronger than to say racist. Uh, Fidelis, isn't it ironic that Sunderland is a club which has invest in Africa on its jersey? I mean, quite profound in terms of how Premier League clubs advertise themselves. Are any of your your African viewers or, or listeners expressing any discomfort over the choice of De Canio? Well, the thing is, most of our, you know, uh, uh, audience, they, what they've been bothered, you know, what they're saying will bother them is actually if he either makes racist comment or takes a, an action that has some, you know, form of connotation, you know, towards racism. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, like now that Stephen uh, is saying, or is like the main midfielder of Sunderland, mm -hmm. if he drops him, who is like the face of the African, uh, Africans in Sunderland, mm -hmm. if he drops him from the team, people will read meaning into people it. People read meanings into it, but as long as He's able to help Sunderland avoid the drop, and people will still see invest in Africa, on you know on the JC of Sunderland in the Premiership. I don't mm -hmm. think people will be so bothered at this stage. Let, let, let me just be brutal. Do a lot of uh, you know uh, people in Africa, those who are following uh, you know the BBC website, are, how how many really are Sunderland fans? And I apologize to any who are, but it does appear to me that at least in Africa, it's either Chelsea or Manchester United or Arsenal or something. Is anyone paying attention to this story? beyond the issue of, of Paulo Di Canio. Yes, the thing is, you know, because Sunderland signed the deal at the end, beginning of the season and they're wearing Invest in Africa, people tend to like, you know, people are looking forward to their matches, trying to find out how they're faring, are they going to stay up in the premiership? And then there are links with the Nelson Mandela Foundation as well, which is also, you know, an African thing. So to some extent, people just have, in quotes, sympathy for them, not really like they've got supporters in Africa. Andrea Storm and Teacup? What are, what are your uh, viewers and listeners expressing? Uh the story actually wasn't that popular at the moment in Russia. You know, some sports website uh, actually reported that Di Canio is, is the manager, but um, it didn't get that much publicity at the moment. So uh, Di Canio is quite famous in Russia because uh, people follow Italian football and uh, English football, and he played for Celtic and he played in West Ham. So it, he's a popular figure, but not a real football celebrity. So uh, it, the story is not followed that and much. Let me quickly try and get this in before we wrap up. Is there much of an overlap between football and politics in Russia and, and we'll, we'll talk about that in Africa. Uh, there is a lot um, in terms of more uh, more when we talk about football supporters in Russia because there were a lot of uh, reports and, and and still now a lot of um, uh, a lot of them are you know racist chanting and even footballers which come from Africa or South America they actually express um, you know their anger that sometimes they they are still being uh, uh, you know they, they show bananas at stadiums and so on so obviously Russia in the run-up to 2018 when it will be the world Cup in Russia. Obviously, the authorities want to stage it properly, and we all know that when it took place in uh, Ukraine and Poland in 2012, there was a lot of reporting, especially a BBC Panorama program, about uh, racist um, racism in football. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lot like that in Russia as well in the run-up to Fidelis, 20. Fidelis, would it be extraordinary for a coach in, say, Nigeria or, or Ghana, if you like, to express openly whatever their political views are? Well, the thing is. Sports, especially football, you know, we've had figures, somebody, for instance, in Ivory Coast where Didier Drogba, you know, he's seen as a role model to so many young people. He's used his influence to, you know, more like mediate when there's crisis in the country. If you come out and you express your political views, provided you're delivering on the pitch, 
all African fans are actually bothered about is what's the result at the end of the match, not really about your personal views. And you think that's going to happen in the case of De Canio, that uh, the fans might give him a bit of a honeymoon to see how he, he delivers because the club is, is very close to relegation. Yeah, the thing is, I think the fans will be at this stage, will be more bothered about Sunderland avoiding the drop and staying up in the premiership and then before they can, you know, unless maybe he goes to the extreme and makes maybe any racist remarks, that's mm -hmm. when people really go hard at him. All right, Andre Kravitz and Fidel Simba, thank you very much for being with us.